Hello everybody, welcome back. We got some breaking news. Gemini just introduced their largest and most capable AI model. And spoiler, it beats ChatGPT or GPT-4 in 30 out of 32 benchmarks. An initial version of Gemini starts to roll out today inside Google's chatbot Bard for the English language setting. It will be available in more than 170 countries and territories. Google says Gemini will be available to developers through Google Cloud's API from December 13th. A more compact version of the model from today powers suggested messaging replies from the keyboard of Pixel 8 smartphones. Gemini will be introduced into Google products, including generative search ads in Chrome in coming months, the company says. The most powerful Gemini version of all will be in 2024 pending extensive trust and safety checks so let's jump right into it i have the article pulled up in front of me that they just dropped 30 minutes ago we've optimized gemini 1.0 our first version for three different sizes gemini ultra our largest and most capable model for highly complex tasks gemini pro our best model for scaling across a wide range of tasks and gemini nano our most efficient model for on-device tasks so think of it as this is like for mobile devices, this is for consumer use, and this is for more enterprise use, I guess. And then uh, they claim to have save the art performance. Bum, bum, bum. If you see here, they scored 90% on the MMLU benchmark, which is a massive multitask language understanding, which uses a com combination of 57 subjects, such as math, physics, history, law, medicine, and ethics, for testing both world knowledge and problem solving abilities. It uses its reasoning capabilities to think more carefully before answering difficult questions, leading to significant improvements over just using its first impression. So I guess they incorporated a reasoning mechanism that allows it to actually uh, think and maybe reflect on the answer before giving it, rather than just giving the first impression um, or the first generation, the first thought that comes out of its head. They have some maybe some loop that allows for reason. And they claim here that Gemini, Ult Gemini Ultra's performance exceeds, exceeds current state-of-the-art results in 30 of the 32 widely used academic benchmarks used in large language models. See here in other benchmarks, it be or GPT-4, every benchmark except this one here, which is the Hello Swag benchmark, which is common sense reasoning for everyday tasks. So GPT-4 is still better in that regard, but it seems like, especially for math, um, this is a big improvement. And this is for multi-model benchmarks. It has surpassed GPT-4 and looks like every single benchmark here. Some of them are slim margins of improvement, but it's still um, important that even if, if it's up to par with GPT-4, is a, a revolutionary thing. Um, that's real competition for GPT-4. And competition is a good thing because it will cause a little bit of an arms race between these two cor corporations for creating better and better AI, which the consumer benefits from. And now let's watch and react to some videos that they published. Let's look at some multi-model demos that Gemini has posted. I see you placing a piece of paper on the table. I see a squiggly line. What about now? The contour lines are smooth and flowing, with no sharp angles or jagged edges. It looks like a bird to me. Hmm, what if I add this? The bird is swimming in the water. It has a long neck and beak. It is a duck. Yes. A duck is a type of waterfowl in the family Anatidae. Ducks are closely related to geese and swans. The duck appears to be blue. This is not a common color for ducks. However, there are some breeds of blue ducks. These are typically not as common as other duck breeds. It is more common for ducks to be brown, black, or white. Are you sure? What the quack? I was just talking about a blue duck, and now you're holding one. It looks like blue ducks are more common than I thought. Would this float? I'm not sure what material it's made of, but it looks like it might be rubber or plastic. What if I tell you it's making a squeaking sound? Oh, if it's squeaking, it's definitely going to float. Mm, nice. It is a rubber duck. It is made of a material that is less dense than water. Can you teach me how to say this in a different language? And give me a few options. Ooh, can you explain how to pronounce the Mandarin one? Is it Yatsu? Yatsu is pronounced with a first tone. In Mandarin, there are four tones, which are essential to distinguish the meaning of words. The first tone is a high level tone. Oh, okay. The duck is in the middle of the ocean. There is no land nearby for the duck to rest or find food. It is unlikely to find ducks here naturally. Okay, based on what you see, come up with a game idea. Oh, and use emojis, please. How about this? We can play a game called Guess the Country. Sure, let's do it. Clue one. This country is the home of the kangaroo, the koala, and the Great Barrier Reef. Oh, that's easy. Clue two. This country loves football and has won the most men's world cups in football history. Hmm. You are trying to get me to find the paper ball under the cup. I accept the challenge. Left. The cup to the left. Nice. I know what you're doing. You're playing rock, paper, scissors. What do you see now? The fingers are spread out to look like the wings of a butterfly. What's this? Big ear and barking mouth. A dog. Sweet. 
The coin should be under the right hand. Mm, I don't know. The coin is in the left hand, using a sleight of hand technique to make it appear as if the coin has disappeared. Both objects are round and flat. There you go. Both are food. The orange is a healthier choice than the cookie. Well. Citrus can be calming and so can the spin of the fidget toy. They are both examples of popular toys that have been enjoyed by children and adults alike for many years. Give me some ideas for what I could make with this. I see pink and green yarn. How about a dragon fruit? Or how about a green cake with a pink heart? Okay, how about these colors? And maybe show me some animals. Okay, now I see blue and pink yarn. How about a pig with blue ears? Or an octopus? Or a bunny with a pink nose? Ooh, I'll keep those in mind. Which way should the duck go? Going left leads to a duck, which is a friend. Going right leads to a bear, which is a foe. It is better to make friends than foes, so the duck should go left. Wow. <laughs> Smart choice. Nice. This is a picture of a crab. That's right. Is this the right order? No, the correct order is Sun, Earth, Saturn. Based on their design, which of these would go faster? The car on the right would be faster. It is more aerodynamic. Which looks more fun? The one on the right, because it has a loop. What do you think this person might be saying? How about a woohoo? Ooh, I love that. I see you're drawing a guitar. You've added an amp. Now it's an electric guitar. We can make some seriously loud music now. Given that you added drums, how about some 80s hair metal? All right, I see you've added a palm tree to the drawing. Change it up with some BG vibes. What movie are they acting out here? I think they are acting out the famous bullet time scene from The Matrix. Ooh, nice. What do you think might happen next? The cat is going to jump to the wall and stick the landing. It's going to be a perfect 10. Oh, and it's a miss. It looks like it was just a little too far away. But don't worry. The cat is a natural athlete and it will be back up there in no time. Okay, I've got one more for you. Describe the drawing I made. It is a simple line drawing of the constellation Gemini. Right. You did a good job of capturing the beauty of Gemini. Nice. That's it. Incredible. Incredible stuff. Incredible stuff. Um, this seems like it's more powerful than the GPT-4 Vision model, 100%. Um, of course, this is like curated for a promotion marketing video. So we'd have to test it, uh, the real thing, and see how it performs compared to GPT-4 Vision. Um, the other thing that was interesting was the coding. I'll show my reaction to that right now. We built Gemini from the ground up to be natively multimodal, including something quite important for both of us, programming code. Gemini is able to consistently understand, explain, and generate code that is correct and well-written in most programming languages. That includes Python, Java, C++, and Go. It substantially improves coding abilities over previous Palm 2 models. From a benchmark around 200 programming functions in Python, it consistently solves about 75% of them in the first try, versus around 45% on Palm 2. If you allow Gemini to check and repair its own answers, this number jumps to over 90%, which is a huge step forward. It can help you create and prototype new ideas in seconds. Let's give it a try. I really like trains. And if I wanted to create a transporting location web app, I can simply ask and get a working prototype in less than a minute. While the code isn't perfect, it's really helpful to have a first draft. Gemini on its own has the ability to transform software development as we understand it, but it can also be deployed as a key component of more sophisticated systems. Gemini is great at coding, but we've been able to take it even further, creating a specialized version that performs remarkably well at competitive programming. Now, why do we care about competitive programming? Well, it is one of the ultimate litmus tests of algorithmic coding abilities. So you have thousands of talented programmers from all over the world that come together to compete and try to solve incredibly complex problems that require not only coding, but also math and reasoning. Two years ago, we presented AlphaCode, and it was the first AI system that could compete roughly at the level of the average human competitor. Today, I'm delighted to introduce AlphaCode 2, a new and enhanced system with massively improved performance powered by Gemini. When we evaluate AlphaCode 2 on the same platform as the original AlphaCode, we solve almost twice as many problems. While AlphaCode broke through the top half of human competitors, on average, we estimate that AlphaCode 2 performs better than 85% of competition participants. Let's have a look at our model in action on one of the hardest problems that we faced. And I say hard because in the original contest, in which the problem appeared, less than 0.2% of participants actually solved it. The problem is, is quite difficult, it's very abstract, so I can't get into too many details, but the basic gist of it is that we are tasked with computing aggregate statistics that account for what 
appears to be an impossibly large amount of random arrays. The really cool thing is that to solve it, AlphaCode 2 makes use of dynamic programming. Dynamic programming is an advanced algorithmic technique which basically simplifies a complicated problem by breaking it down into easier subproblems again and again. And what's really impressive is that not only AlphaCode 2 knows how to properly implement this strategy, but also when and where to use it. What the example shows us is that competitive programming is not just about implementation. It's also about understanding, maths, computer science, and indeed coding. And that makes it an extremely hard reasoning task. So it's not very surprising that up till now, generally available uh, large language models have scored very poorly on this benchmark. These models are really, really good at following instructions, but AlphaCode needs to do more than that. It needs to show some level of understanding, some level of reasoning, designing of code solutions before it can actually get to the actual implementation to solve the problem. And it does all that on problems that it's never seen before. Alpha code is somewhat of an agent. Um, not sure how they made the backend looks like, um, but say GPT just does the implementation based on the instructions. This can probably an analyze the requirements needed and design it before proceeding with implementation. ChatGPT kind of does this, but it's not like inherently um, wired to do so. I think Alpha code is required to do so. So it's more specialized in uh, for coding applications. This is kind of reminds me of like agents like Autogen and ChatDev where each agent has different roles in the system. Good at following instructions, but AlphaCode needs to do more than that. It needs to show some level of understanding, some level of reasoning, designing of code solutions before it can actually get to the actual implementation to solve the problem. And it does all that on problems that it's never seen before. Another thing that is great about AlphaCode is that it performs even better when it collaborates with human coders who can provide grounding. Basically, developers can specify properties that the code samples have to obey. And when we do that, we see performance increase significantly. We think of this, uh, this kind of interaction between uh, programmers and AIs as the future of programming, where coders will not just give instructions, but actually collaborate with highly capable AI models that can reason about their problems, that can propose code designs, and that can even help with the actual implementation. AlphaCode 2 was built for competitive programming, but we're already working on bringing some of its unique capabilities right into the general Gemini models as a first step towards making this new programming paradigm available for everyone. And if you want to learn more about this model, link in the description to the actual paper that Google released outlining all the benchmarks and tests that they have done. Um, TLDR, if you don't want to read it, I'm going to summarize it all and just the phrase that it's outperforming GPT-4 and a lot of benchmarks. Um, although these are just benchmarks, we have to do some testing, see how it actually compares in real tests, um, because it, a lot of the benchmarks depend on how the model is trained. So we'll have to actually test it out and the ultra model for Gemini comes out in early 2024. So we're going to wait for that as well. Um, so yeah, this is a big revolutionary um, escalation on Google's part because now we have a fi we have finally have a real com competitor to GPT-4 or something that's at least on par or even surpasses GPT-4 um, in the case of these benchmarks and uh, on what these benchmarks indicate. So thank you guys for watching and peace.